Sometimes it's not what you invest in, it's what you don't invest in, and I only make one or two big trades a year. And I think my story just proves that there's never a bad time to make a great investment. I think that story is ever more important as we look forward to 2013, not knowing exactly which way the markets are going to take us. And I actually made 20, 000, turned 20,000 to 2 million from 2007 to 2010 in the middle of the worst financial turmoil we've had in the country in decades. And the way that I did it was just learning how to retrain my mind to identify game-changing things in real life that were having game-changing impacts on publicly traded companies. And the trick here is to understand when you see something in your life that Wall Street hasn't picked up on yet. And that's when you have an opportunity to make an information arbitrage investment. Now, the moment that Wall Street starts talking about that thing that you picked up on days, weeks, or months earlier is when you exit the investment. And that really is what my methodology is all about, just living your life and learning how to see things uh, that could correlate to investment opportunities on Wall Street. I mean, of course, Chris, the, the risk is, is that you're not a very good picker, if you will, when it comes to picking trends. I mean, you might think that your crocs are awesome, and yes, they you know, they ended up doing all right. But what happens if Wall Street never comes around, I guess is what I'm saying. What happens if the thing that you think is going to be the next big thing just isn't? Okay, so it's not what you think is the best next big thing. It's what you notice around you. It's what people are adapting to. So, for example, a, a coworker of mine last year came to me and she said, Chris, I know you're an investor. I just read this book called The Hunger Games. And all of my friends have read this book. And I'm telling you, if they ever make it into a movie, it is going to be bigger than Harry Potter. I thought she was nuts. Bigger than Harry Potter? I've never even heard of this book. And I did a little bit of research, and I found out that Lionsgate, a company that had never had a blockbuster film, was, had actually slated to turn this book into a feature film. Now, Lionsgate, in the next six months, doubled, doubled as a stock, right? Those sorts of stories happen all the time. And Wall Street took many months to pick up on that story. And it's not because I read Hunger Games. I never even read the book as an investor. I didn't care about Hunger Games. I cared about the fact that millions of kids were so passionate about this book, which ultimately turned into a multi-hundred million dollar film. So, Chris, you start with 20000 you get it to $2 million. The question is, how do you size the position? In other words, you have your great idea, let's go buy Lionsgate. Let's say at that point you had, to make the number easy, a million dollars of capital. Do you buy half a million? Do you buy a hundred thousand? Do you put all million? I mean, how do you size these trades? Well, it, it, it's, well for me, it was very simple. I, I, I essentially took roughly 20 to 40 percent of my portfolio and poured it into the next trade. Now, you can do that when you're only investing once or twice a year, but I invest with conviction. So I'm only making one or two investments a year. When I find something, it's material. It's a big, it's not just a trend. It's a big game changing event that for whatever reason, Wall Street has missed. And over the eight or nine investments I made in that three year period that were my big investments, I think I maybe missed on one. The other seven or eight, all of them were hits that generated for me triple digit returns. In some case, three, four, five hundred percent returns in a very short period of time. All right, now the million dollar question. What do you like now? Well, you know, I don't have anything on the slate at this moment. I will tell you this. For me, personally, I think the advent of crowdfund investing in 2013 is bigger than anything I see in the stock market right now. And because of the JOBS Act, the crowdfunding exemption, every single American will have the opportunity in 2013 to invest in startups the same way VCs and angels do today, even if it's a small amount of money. So we can leverage our own local knowledge, the knowledge we have in our profession, the hobbies that we have. We can leverage that to invest in people in our own social networks that are starting the next big thing, the next Facebook or the next store in our neighborhood. Uh, that's, a, that's really big news for us. I think it's the biggest thing to happen in decades to investing in American innovation. So I'm really excited about that. On the stock side, uh, I don't have anything at the moment. Uh, I might be waiting eight or nine months to catch my next big investment. Um, but it's all about patience. I, I, I say it's like the big wave surfer. You know, big wave surfers will wait for months and months and months for that big storm to come. And they're waiting, they're plotting, and they're very patient. And they travel wherever it is around the world to take that next big wave. Well, I invest the same way. It could be September of 2013 before I make my next big investment. You have to be patient. In the interim, I'm just going to continue to live my life, read lots of magazines, go to the movies, go to restaurants, 
observe the world around me and continue to hone my sense of critical observation. And that's something that any single individual person can do. You don't have to have a financial background to do that. And when you see something game changing, if Wall Street hasn't picked up on it, that's an opportunity to make a game changing big trade. All right, you keep reading, and I'll tell you what, we'll make you a deal. When you get your next big idea, please come on and tell us. We want to hear about it, Chris Camillo. I, I absolutely will.